welcome to Good Libations, which is our show about mixology. We know this show always strives to do unique things, and I'm Ethel Andrews, I'm a mixologist, and we've been making a journey recently about mules. And today, I'm not going to exactly make another mule, which is a cocktail where ginger beer is a necessary ingredient. This is actually a different kind of a drink. And it's a drink that's a bit of a spin-off on a drink that I made earlier on this show, probably about a year and a half ago. At the time, I made a drink that I call the Verdant Virtue Vice, which is quite a name. And again, that's actually a drink that is made in Northern California at a winery in Sonoma called the Metlock Ames Winery. And the gentleman who kind of pioneered the use of this drink is an English, or excuse me, a Scottish gentleman, pardon me, named Kenny Roqueford. He's the one who originated this drink. And I love the fact that it involved muddling mint and basil in a base of gin and chartreuse green liqueur. And we're gonna make a variation of that drink today using gin and chartreuse green liqueur. And I've mentioned this before on that previous show, but Chartreuse green liqueur is an entity in of itself and there is no substitute for it. It has something like 40 to 60 different herbs in it. So you can't just go out and substitute something for it. You absolutely have to use it. And it's incredibly expensive and there's very few places where you can find it. And I don't usually plug establishments on this show. But this little bottle, 320 milliliters, I believe it is, basically you can only get it at Vendome in La Cunada, Red Carpet in Glendale, or the bottle shop in Sierra Madre, which is a lovely place to get your liquor because they're so accommodating and they have things that you can't find anywhere. At any rate, Chartres Green Liqueur is made by Cathucian monks in Grenoble, France. It's the same place where they genetically engineered, you might say, before the day of genetic engineering, the chartreuse cat. So these people are not only into genetic engineering, but also into making a lovely liqueur that is incomparable. At any rate, we're going to go about making this drink. And instead of adding sparkling mineral water to it, like I did the Verdant Virtue Vice, I'm going to actually add ginger beer to it, which is going to give it that nuance and that flavor of a mule. So call it what you may, but at any rate, this is a unique drink. It's a drink of my own invention, and I think you will enjoy it if you take the time to make it at home. And again, you got to have deep pockets to get your chartreuse green liqueur. And there's two different types of chartreuse. There's chartreuse yellow and chartreuse green, and they both taste different. And this will require the chartreuse green, no substitutes. So now that I've given my lecture about that, we're going to set about making this drink. And we're going to make sure that we add ample ice again. And you could use this particular glassware, but again, I like to use the chimney glass. Because the chimney glass makes drinks look elegant. It sets them off in a unique way. It's a slim glass, and again, if something looks nice, it tends to taste better as well. That's why, you know, using certain glasses with wines is important. Using certain styles of glass with your cocktails and mixed drinks is important also. So, and the base liquor for this particular drink, which is a mule, is gin, or a variation on a mule, I should say. Now, the interesting thing about gin is gin tends to lend itself a bit better to lemon over lime. So I like to use lemon in any drink that requires gin. And that's precisely what we're going to do, is squeeze a decent amount of lemon in this drink. And as per usual, we're going to leave the spent shell in there. So I'm going to add the lemon. Leave a spent shell, add a bit more lemon. And thankfully, this is a nice, juicy, cooperative lemon, so 
the flavor and the infusion of the peel is going to be there. And now we're going to add our chartreuse green liqueur. And we're going to add a decent amount of it, but we want to maintain a certain amount of subtlety to it as well, so not an outrageous amount of it. And again, I like to free pour. And we're going to do a little hand spooning of this, mix it up a little bit. I could not even begin to describe the notes that I can taste in that chartreuse green liqueur. There's a top note of licorice or anisette, but there's all kinds of herbs in there. And you can taste the little nuances of them. But again, you'd have to run through a list of 40 to 60 ingredients to even begin to duplicate as if you could the taste of chartreuse green. What is going to make this drink unique is unlike with the Verdant Virtue Vice, I'm going to add a top of ginger beer to it. I emphasize ginger beer, not ginger ale. And we're going to add just a top of it instead of the um, sparkling mineral water like we did with the Verdant Virtue Vice. And it might be interesting in retrospect to muddle basil and mint with this drink. It would work also to do it that way. But for simplicity's sake and for maintaining the trueness to the term mule, we're going to go ahead and keep it as it is. We're going to add just a tad more lemon to this. I'm going to cut off just a bit more. But again, this is an example of how you can start with a certain drink as a base and add different nuances to it and turn it into something a bit different. So I'm going to add more lemon to it and use that kind of as a decorative flourish there. This is a lovely tasting drink. It's unique. There's nothing quite like it. And sometimes too, you, when you make cocktails similar to this, because I did it with the Verdant Virtue Vice, is I substituted Benedictine and brandy. And I called it the B&B &B Vice instead of the Chartreuse Green. And that too is a unique liqueur that is actually made by monks also in Italy. I believe in um, Monte Carlo, Italy. But at any rate, we're going to take a sip of this drink and see if it lives up to all that I explained about it, see if it's that good. And oh yes, that is lovely. Because again, you can taste the chartreuse green. It doesn't overpower the gin. The gin doesn't overpower the other ingredients. Everything marries and blends beautifully. And again, always remember that. Make sure that the base alcohol in the ingredients that you add to it are compatible with one another and marry perfectly. And again, we've made another creative, innovative, and unique and interesting cocktail. And again, let's always show good sense and respect for alcoholic beverages when we make these drinks, when, they, when we serve them to our, our guests, and when we imbibe ourselves. Let's keep our community safe and well spoken of. Let's maintain our own good reputation and our family's reputation by drinking moderately and sensibly. And thank you again for tuning into another episode of Good Libations. I'm Ethel Andrews, a mixologist. Thank you again. Goodbye. Uh -huh.